everybody. Hi. Here we are again. Um, I know we take a lot of time, but um, I hope it podcast. makes between the podcast. But um, you know, life happens. You know, and our life is quite uh, about to become quite um, travelly again. We're going to the east coast, uh, unless a, unless yeah. a hurricane comes in. <laughs> I heard about there's a hurricane, um, and New Jersey. And, and Argentina, Argentina, Brazil, Brazil. We go to Brazil for the first time in since COVID. Too long, so I can't wait to see Laura Pedrotti. Um, tell everybody in Brazil we're coming, and um, we see Marcela Passo. We see Marcela, of course, Argentina, Marcella. and we see um, Katia Milau, Milau, our friend. Many people, many people of many friends. You know, it's going to be amazing. Um, we hope you come you should come because we are getting older and this is not going to be a uh, a time to travel <laughs> to travel exactly so um this is going to be a little bit a part of shameless shameless self-promotion <laughs> because we worked we worked a lot over the last couple of days while we were here because we wanted to start two months season yeah. six and season six is now about to start officially in well, the first right. one has come out now. The already. first one has come out. It's like a taster. It's like it's like an uh, nine hours long. <laughs> it's a very very in It's a very long amuse bouche. Okay. <laughs> and but uh, it's uh, the it's next a, one at the b December first. Okay, and then basically for the whole by the time, basically when we are back, we're going to just start producing every week something. Every week out. something comes up. You know the usual. Rhythm is going to be Q and A's, right, with you. The people have paid for the whole series. Many people. So there, you know, because there is a hardcore of students, but um, share, like, and describe, uh, and uh, subscribe, <laughs> subscribe, <laughs> describe. You don't need to redo this, um, but subscribe. What we've done a lot is, of course, I've done a lot of mm. um, very specific hypnosis sessions, which I wanted to experiment with and see if they work. And I tried the live version on some students and some clients. You know, in various hotel rooms, who said, I need a hypnosis session. Mm. And so, of course, technically, you can't recreate what I've done with the recordings, but the way I connect um, a hypnosis with a subliminal message, with a solfeggio frequency, a Schumann resonance, uh, subliminals, and then a dimensional shift at the very end. And um, we had such great results with it. So I thought, okay, I'm coming back, I'm going to record it. In a technical way, in such a way that it can be used by everybody, and we have it in English and in German because, you know, of these reasons. Do you want so, to talk about the inner child? Because that's well, the last one you did. The last one I did, and today, just today, um, today is the Monday, um, <laughs> the, 11th, going, yeah. the 11th. I released the German version of "Heal Your Inner Child," mm. and I think, from a shamanic point, from a psychologic point, from a therapeutic point, from a self initiation point, mm -hmm. I think that the idea of the inner child is really important because the inner child is the core of your intuition, the, the way your voice is being programmed, mm -hmm. so to speak. And every belief system, every um, aspect of faith, even you can say, is based on this inner child. The inner child voice is created in the first three years. Mm -hmm. After the fourth, it's done. That's why children love at some point, the first word usually is no, to make the point. I'm distancing myself from your boundaries. That's when you lose them, basically. But um, I think inner child healing is a very important um, aspect that needs to be integrated in all kinds of self, self well, work. Right? In my work, you have to, first of all, go back to that time when you're young, right. to go as an adult. Right. You find the inner child in the household that you grew up right, in, right, right. whether apartment or a house. And then you have to befriend that child, take them out of the house as their parent. Once you take the child back to your house, where you live now, you feed it, mm. you nurture it, you form a bond. So in shamanism, there's a whole process to it. And in you know, therapy, too. In therapy, too. All therapy in, work. And, you know, and I think, again, because I'm not a therapist and um, I'm not the healer in the family, but I want to contribute something, because I'm quite technical, something that can help the subconscious to change the narrative. Because 
every perception we have about reality, um, time, space, it's all made up. You know, it's just all, you know, it's just based on what you believe. And so a certain set of beliefs is set up in that childhood period. And uh, which usually for seven years, usually for seven, but in the, the voice or the intuitive voice, it's in the first three years, and then it's set basically. Um, but it's not set for good because, of course, obviously, we are, you know, our work is all about transforming, evolving, changing, moving forward. You see, so I think, um, we have well, I made four, um, in English and German, which is the um, prosperity. Um, healing, prosperity, psychic awareness, psychic activation through hypnosis, through hypnosis and dimensional shifting. And so, again, people ask how I can use it. Also, people ask, well, you know, I meditate quite a bit. Can I just shorten it? Look, it's yours. Oh. Once you buy it, it's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. Put it in your ears if you want. <laughs> but my recommendation is, even if you think you're so seasoned, is to give the neurologic connection time to build a new neurologic bridge to exchange one bridge for a better bridge so to speak you have to give it time so when you are really really seasoned in meditation very good in shamanic journeys and so on i recommend that you do a recording for 20 days if you're not and you'll say honestly listen i'm i'm just getting into it then take yourself give yourself some time and use 40 days, 40 days, then two weeks a break, and then you start another 40 day cycle, two weeks a break, another 40 day cycle. I have students who did cycles for a year on with one recording, with one subject, and it, it transformed more than just that one subject, you see, but it needs time for the brain to create a neurologic bridge to a newer dimensional experience. Plus you did a Vimeo in which you're programming into the hands, like mudras, all the different brainwave patterns. That, that, uh, that is alpha, yeah, gamma. That is the Odyssey journey, spirit voyage as I call it, where I wanted, again, in a technical way, simmer down the process of anchoring various and recalling on command certain brainwaves which gives us the ability of certain qualities yes. of experience. In alpha, I think alpha is only, I don't want to say only, but alpha is predominantly good for healing. Mm -hmm. Receiving, giving, sending. Where theta is a place where we correct things, we intercommunicate with beings, we have connections with beings. Which is more the shamanic journey. Which is more the shamanic journey. Then we have Delta, and Delta is the place of creation. This is where we go and we build an idea or a concept that is impossible, but not out of reach, so to speak. Like See, going to the place of formation. In shamanic journey. journeys. That's a, we do that. It's a different process, but again, the similarity is quite, quite there. How um, various ancestors perceive the idea of changing a reality and changing a direction it starts with the training of the mind there is no other way around it mm -hmm. i really think and i want to say it again because i said it in my, in my video if you practice something and your mind is not focused mm -hmm. in these four or five layers on that go you're paddling in the ocean with a hopefully with a swimming vest you know mm -hmm. but you have no direction where the hell you're going you need to have your inner compass lined up and that is all here in the mind I know in shamanism it's more important because in your heart it, it, it's wider a variety of um, reasons why you you train the mind to overcome to control I think shamanism is a lot about controlling but it goes to the mind anyway you have to break through your mind like going to the gym and you think um, I've done 20 minutes on a, on a treadmill do 30 do 10 more you know just it's that will control that will power which takes time but once you're there we say you're entering the hermetic realm this is when you will perceive thoughts feelings dreams realities in a very different way and then also you will experience what we call synchronicities mm -hmm. and synchronicities synchronicity, sorry are um, 
alignment. They are alignment that obviously you've put yourself in the right path. Now the universe responds with how you're feeling. Because what did we always say? The universe will not give you what you want, but who you are. So you have to clarify this image, this emotional image of yourself. And that's why we're doing all this technical work instead of just vacationing, you know. But um, the other day, I felt a nudge to go to the mailbox. So I walked outside and just in that moment, a hummingbird came right in mm -hmm. front of me. And then it sat on the tree and then, you know, I looked at the hummingbird, I tried to communicate. And that's when we began this series. That's when I began the shamanic journey because I felt that's the moment. It's the art to understand the synchronicity because how often do you get emails when students or clients say, I thought about something and this happened. Is this a sign? I mean, I do that dumb. Well, people you know, think of read me. the sign. Well, they think of me and I'm in a state of well, mind. People dream of you a lot. And then I see them, you know, I yeah. see them in front of me and then I say, well, have you died? So usually I will write somebody and say, are, are you well? Are you okay? Right. Then I'll find out either they died well, or they're, they're remembering me. They s and they will write me and say, just the other day I was thinking of you and I had this feeling of when we first met and, right. and I picked up on it. Yeah. But, and, and that this, happens to This day. is normal. This is normal when you follow, I want to call it now a dimensional practice. Mm -hmm. See, I'm very reluctant to enter these ideas of spirituality because it's so watered down and it's so, you know, it's like a really watered down Coca-Cola, you know, it tastes <laughs> like nothing anymore. And it just misses the idea of what the whole process is about, which is really to experience and to understand that you are a spirit with a human experience, not the other way around. And more than that, that you can control all that because we are existing in a infinite variables of dimensional timelines. Which is quite subtle when you wake up and you realize that is not how I laid out my table before I went to sleep. It's all changed. I'm not in the same dimensional space that I was in yeah, before. Yeah, it's all the time. And things are missing. All things the are time. There. All the time. Things I don't usually attempt. Because <laughs> it is also, I'm not dirty, but I'm a little messy. So, but it's mess with meaning. And I always it, make order. And you make order. I cannot find for the life of me the pieces I need. I mean, but it's not there. It's like, what did he do? Did he eat it? You know, no. swallowed it? It was on his but desk. But it's on my desk and it's gone. In other <laughs> words, it's not gone. It just vibrates on a different timeline. In other words, not an in, in, inanimate object goes through dimensional shifts, always a organic being goes through it. And so it's these moments when we, and this is so interesting, a dimensional shift, if I want to give it an extreme example, is, and I remember this years, years ago, I was almost in, an, in a, I was almost in a full head-on collision mm. with a car. I wasn't driving. But we lost control over the car, I think. It was raining something, and a car came um, ahead of us, you know, uh, in front of us. And I was sure, that's it. He's going to crash into us. That's it, so get ready. And in that moment of awareness, in that moment of awareness, where you acknowledge the possibility, this is it. That's the end. It's that moment of... It's happened a few times. It's happened a few times. Um, in that moment, time stands still. This is the only way I can describe it. It's almost like when you're underwater mm. and everything is like... Or if you're in space and you know, they're trying to grab something and it's like really slow to get there. I'm just making it up. And there's a warm feeling. There it's is a feeling of time completely... Stops. Stops is the word. And this in that particular case, in that particular case, we didn't crash. I don't know what happened, but he missed us. And so we stopped the car um, and we were both convinced, uh, me and my friend, then we died. <laughs> Which I was a little pissed off because I had to open the door and I thought, should I just slide out and see the light? It took me almost half an hour mm. with ambulances around, with police around because I was convinced I'm dead and they're all you know angels whatever you want to call them they're playing now this human roles 
to make the shock more bearable almost um and you you often see dead people walking around which is quite a yeah a thing that you have to learn how to transition the dead if you're supposed to transition them the thing is how to help them it's quite a big word it to me. That. i think it's much more important very you see for me um i want to say this technically if you look at it really technically there is no place to, to transition them because they are already in the transition it is to make them aware that they are if they're not you know if they're not and it can be you know dying can be so quickly sometimes that they just don't notice we were, or, we were driving in england at night and there was this woman you know walking i said why is she barefoot why is she wearing these victorian clothes and my friend carolyn was driving the car and i she said what woman what are you talking about yeah. I said, that woman right there that we're passing now i don't see anybody there so some people don't see it yeah some people do see it um but they're ghosts yeah and they're wandering ghosts yes yeah. sometimes they're in the I houses think, we stay i think in. the idea is i think the idea is and i want i will try to help people to understand it is there is really nothing to attract mm. and nothing to send in because everything is in its respective vibrational match okay so yes we're sending our loved ones energy we light a candle we we hope they they say and they do sense it there's no question but it's not like they need us yeah. to make it to heaven or so or some other place you know they think that, that happens <laughs> that happens even if that, that that doesn't need to happen because the soul will go exactly to the respective vibrational matching timeline and dimensional reality where they're meant to be yes. you know that is the idea and so to wish somebody a good journey is that what what it represents is the knowledge that um that the soul wakes up on the other side we would say and says i had the weirdest dream i dreamt that i was in this body and i got old and i looked wrinkly and you know my boobs were sagging my face was done <laughs> so you know i have to say oh my god that was the weirdest dream <laughs> that's how the soul will perceive it physical life is a dream in the end well i was getting out of bed the other day this summer and all i could think of was miranda carlos miranda yeah. and i went into the bathroom and there was miranda i could feel him yeah and i said miranda are you dead and just acknowledging thank yeah. you because you were the one who opened me spiritually yeah you have a long story with him and and that happened with many people yeah. this summer yeah because many people did die yes and sometimes all we find out is just their facebook post right. or somebody writes us and says right. your hair cutter died you know both our hair cutters died <laughs> yeah and this summer but it was quite profound yeah you know yeah. the way we found out and people then wrote us right after it within 24 hours you know miranda died or Right. this person died but you know they visit they, they visit, visit earlier they come around absolutely and it's a wonderful it's thing. wonderful it's also a great honor i think but the reason why we pick it up or anyone is either you are born with that antenna and you lost the control and it's always open or <laughs> you are training yourself again you know again i want to promote a little bit um share like and subscribe and um so in the shamanic really? journeying, yes, mm. you also help to transition souls. Yeah. You also yeah. journey to heal others. Yeah. You heal yourself. Yeah. You go to the different stars, like a star constellation mm. kind of therapy, and you go to each star system, and you're regaining parts of yourself yeah. back. The whole shamanic journeying, there are 12 journeys well, all together, yeah. and you are bringing back your power, bringing well, back all your well, power. It's, um, yes, it's, it's 11 yeah. journeys. And one you do by yourself. By yourself. The yeah. others I guide you through. Yeah. The, co the family constellation that I learned a gazillion years ago had nothing to do with earthly families. It was based completely on a star journey. And I think I'm the only person who recovered it again. And from memory had to put it together. Of course, I reformulated the idea. But it's part of the shamanic journey because it is a shamanic journey where you return and revisit and re-acknowledge the planetary constellations which we visit in our dimensional experiences. We're also there right now, you see? 
And as I'm making it, you know, everything expands around mm -hmm. me. You know, the spirits are walking through the well, room. The they, were, is, they were changing the, the recordings. I mean, <laughs> I mean so, you know, I want to blame Mercury retrograde, but by God, we start, you know, I start because I'm producing the whole thing. So Fossil records, and I, then I sit there for hours to produce it. The stuff that happens is bizarre. <laughs> it's truly bizarre, you know. Um, it's and fun. I'm so used to it. It's, I'm so used to it. To 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 while I listen to it over and over, it's like I'm hypnotized by it, of course. But you feel that every cell and every atom in my body responds to the process because I've done it for so long, and I'm I'm I'm, um, you're making visuals of it, and you're I'm making, making visuals. music for yeah. it, yeah, 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 to support the journey. Yeah. We're because banging the drums and I battles. Tell, I want to tell you in my um, Odyssey Mind video, right? One okay. thing is also going a little bit further. I don't meditate with closed eyes anymore because I will fall asleep. Okay, <laughs> I, I fall asleep. There's no reason for me to. So, one master goal is that's why I have the visuals is when somebody says, and we have a few students who've been with decades with us and really trained their mind. Um, they say, I have no problem keeping my eyes open and following the whole process. And that's why we have these visuals. I made these AI visuals, movies basically, to kind of stimulate the subconscious, also the, to, to distract the brain, you know, because it needs distraction. But if you are able at the end to meditate, to visualize, to project, and no one can tell because you're not just, you know, zooming out with your eyes closed, lying on a sofa. That is one of the high arts, so to speak, because it will lead also to a process that we call scrying. And scrying is to see interdimensionally. And which Vim, which one of your, is it in the Vimeo? No, it's in the Vimeo. Yes. It's in the Vimeo. Which is, the very which end. one? Which Vimeo? No, the Odyssey, Mind Odyssey Vimeo. At the very end, I described the process. I'll but describe. again, it's just tools, you know. It's a black mirror, it's a crystal ball, it's a glass of water. I usually used to see things in a cup of black coffee. So my ex-boyfriends always got nervous when I said, give me a cup of black coffee. Because, you know, I could, you know, I was like a tracker, basically. I could see what was happening. Um, it's just a tool. The trained sense of the mind that is... Um, like an antenna and, um, and, and absorbs the information, absorbs it and projects it. It absorbs it through the solar plexus and sends it to the third eye. I want to, again, remind you guys, the third eye is not a receiver. Mm -hmm. It's a sender. I don't know where this nonsense comes from. <laughs> People who have no idea, they don't see and they just babble everything they heard on the internet or read in millions of books. The, the third eye is a projector. It sends an information you perceive with your solar plexus. That's why we say, I had a gut feeling. Right. What do you think that gut feeling is? It's a reception of information. It travels to the heart, through the voice, and into the third eye. And from there, it projects it and gives you an idea or a sense or a, I knew that would come in. I knew this would happen. Mm -hmm. That is why you're sending it through the perception, and therefore, heart chakra, solar plexus, heart chakra, and throat are the most important to be trained. They're the most important to be trained. You see, like when I, I was doing a Chinese television show on healing, mm. and from my own heart went into uh, that because I had all these sensors on me. I was in a laboratory in a hospital, and my heart goes into a Fibonacci series, a right. perfect Fibonacci. That's what it is, yeah. And then. It moved up to my throat, and I'm talking, of course, on Chinese yeah. TV. And then I said, now I'm sending from my third eye the yeah. healing to the patients in China. Yeah. yeah. And whoever has that recording, that is a perfect mm. healing recording. And if people are in resonance mm. with it and they receive it, they have a healing automatic. I think these days, um, because of the advancement of technology and what can be recorded and the advancement of CAT scans and mm. MRIs, there is no question that when you meditate, when you um, channel, when you practice mindfulness, mm. the brain changes. Mm. You can tell it's there. You can see it on the monitor. It changes. This is now undisputed. So we have now, thank God, 
science who <laughs> tells us that you know everybody before who knew it was right you know but <laughs> bless their hearts but the idea is now we have evidence for that stuff and we can measure it we can visually uh, make it um well, if I put myself up to a group of people, even usually we're like a hundred people or fifty yeah. people, I would at, say to my my gods or whatever, I'd say, give a message to every single person in this room. Right. And then I don't remember anything. It's Nothing. Basically, ten minutes later for me, right. but it's been five six hours. hours. Right. And I'm not tired or anything. Yeah. And usually, you know, once in England, somebody interrupted me and he said, you know, I don't believe any of this, and yeah. you know, I'm not really into it. I said, that's fine. You can go now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not for you. Yeah. Uh, no, no bad thing, but maybe it's time to go. Yeah. Plus, it was also six hours later, and I was right. just coming out of it. Right. You know, that's when people always try to get you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're coming out of it. But for six hours, yeah. felt like ten minutes, and everybody yeah. got a message. I can't remember any the, of the messages. The brain changes. It changes. Um, and it's very specific, exactly what's happening yeah, in their life, yeah. exactly what they need to hear for that yeah. time. Yeah. Um, so, again... Um, this is not something unusual. This is something I think very natural, which just has been not trained, you know. Sometimes it's to prevent somebody's death. Like sometimes I tell people, you know, I think you're going to die. I think you should go to the doctor today. You're going to have an operation. <laughs> That's happened like but 20 it happens. times. It happens in our lives. But the idea is, and people are saved. you know, but the idea is where we want to go with this is um, we want you to be able to tap into that. Yes. To what extent? I don't care. But to get a feeling and an idea that you are not powerless because depression and, you know, this loneliness, these are only, I call them untrained empaths. You know, you are already an antenna, but you've never trained to dial in right in and out. Um, and that's why um, when we came back, I said, I, I want to put this into a product which is affordable because it is it's a ton of work so but it's really affordable it's downloadable because it's in a smaller version but you can stream it you can listen to it and it's just up to you what you bring to the table if you bring the time in or not so and that is what we're doing now with um, uh, the CDs as well um, they're just great products to enhance uh, it's a great to jump into a process and begin a, a um, and practice, for example, and again, it practices is right. these days begin very often based on technology. You know, it's inevitable. It, there's well, the so much. Well, training is a practice. It's a practice. You know, there is. But it's again, it's the regularity and the focus which you bring to the table. Um, when I was with the shamans, we spent a week in silence meditating all day, mm -hmm. and they supplied food and read quotes, you know, spiritual quotes like they do in yoga. This was a very long time ago in the 1980s, mm -hmm. and beginning of the 80s. And what was extraordinary about it is, after the seven days, you know, we then were put into a room, and in that moment, you have to write whatever is coming to you. You know, you have to get the message. Yeah. And we, we just made ourselves very neutral and open, and so they guided us in a shamanic journey. This is why I made a shamanic journey guidance. And they were guiding us through the solar system. And he had mm -hmm. asked me, could you please, Foster, write a script? Because we have the music, we have everything, but we need a script. So I wrote a long script, very similar to the journey we did uh, in, in the Vimeo. But this was quite long through the Pleiades and everything with music by Kitaro. And it was quite a production. And a lot of people would enter the room. And then he, it would begin. And he would narrate this journey, you know, live. And... I don't know what happened, but that's when I had my first full body kundalini with all the mm. bells in the body and my whole body shaking and everything going up and going into ecstasy. And I realized the importance of that star journey in, in the shamanic journey. That that's, was the moment it triggered the kundalini. Mm. And every journey after that um, opened me further and further and further for everything I was going to do. Mm. I was only 25 years old then. But it had such a huge impact, shamanic journey. It wasn't just the drum. He was really guiding us. Mm -hmm. And I'll always remember that. And that's why I wanted to do guided journeys. Mm -hmm. And like you first met Jose Silva, mm -hmm. he had a huge effect. And you were 10 years huge. old. Huge. And you understood what he was doing then. Absolutely. 
I thought he was an angel on earth, I tell you. He was one of the, I think, one of the most impressive auras you can imagine on somebody. Never lost it. You know, I mean, he died quite, quite late. But um, he was, um, again, it, um, I have, I said this also in my Vimeo, um, I give a couple of ex uh, examples of people that I think should be acknowledged. Jose Silva, of course, Franz Barden, I mean, from amazing. a called amazing, you know. When you it read is. it, it sounds almost fantastical, but it's not. It is literally 2% theory and it's 98% practice. It's just written in a very... You loved level. your teacher, Shivananda, the yogi. Absolutely. He was but it hundred was, something. It was more than a... astral teaching you know, of yes. some sort. But it was there. It was like... You sitting here next to me. Um, Many but, of your teachers again, were in the astral. They were not in physical. No, level. no. My teachers came and went in. Um, but they stayed for years. They stayed for years in a physical form, but they stayed in such a way that no one can remember around me. Them, yeah. was, well, no, they could see them. I mean, I assume they could see them because they interacted with them. But um, once they were gone, the memory of them were gone. You know, and I said, I thought, you know. Maybe we need to get a CAT scan or something. <laughs> but um, to this day, my 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 mother my mother is now Alzheimer. But um, she really could not remember anyone living with us for four years. <laughs> he was her teacher. Paying rent. He was my teacher. He was at living ten years with us. Old. And um, he showed up at ten and left at fourteen and said, "Now you're ready." Uh, that's what it is. You see, that's what happens. And the good thing is. I, I still trust the sources that are coming through me and not the ones that I'm looking at, you know, because it's so easy now to cobble together some system, some belief pattern uh, from the internet and um, 50 books and uh, 30 other people. Mm -hmm. Show me the evidence. I need to see the practice. I need to see, I need to know that somebody, everybody can be on stage and talk himself into oblivion, basically. That is over for me. I need to see evidence. I need to see physical evidence. I need to see meta metaphysical evidence. I need to see something that translates into this reality because that's what the metaphysical and the hermetic promises, by the way. It was never a theoretic idea or alchemy. It was never a philosophic concept. It was a very physical concept, mm. you know. But once you lose the willingness to practice or you're not allowed to practice because of religion and uh, persecution, and knowledge gets lost, that's when a system becomes, or knowledge becomes philosophic. Philosophic means simply the practice is lost. Mm. You know? And I know in Franz Barden's work is, um, um, I always knew there is more material. Always knew. And... Um, Have you found all the material? It's not my job to find it. It's been given now to the family. Um, whatever was left of it and there is a Czechoslovakian publisher who received from students material that got excavated basically and they said now it's time it's being translated into English as we speak and it's a humongous amount of work but that's what I'm, I'm so excited about because otherwise you're ending up with a philosophy you're ending up with a a thought process rather than a physical process and I'm interested only in the physical process now I've done all the philosophy how does it work otherwise why and how can I convince somebody to follow a process for a year like in Kabbalah for example my form of Kabbalah <coughs> excuse me when um, when it doesn't go beyond the you know the basic practice and then a lot of philosophy and then a lot of chocolate sauce, you know, everybody puts their own chocolate sauce on top. So for me, it's important to scale things down. I know that what you're doing is important because how many people say, where's the new stuff in shamanism? Well, you haven't used the old stuff yet, you know. Yeah, we have 49 Vimeos. <laughs> it's a whole school. And when I review no, 60. the old Vimeos, <coughs> They're, they're a gold mine. There's so much in them, and we yeah. revealed so yeah, much. Yeah. yeah. And now we're going to the next step, the next 10, yeah. which is quite extraordinary. Yeah. Because we're plummeting the depths of, of consciousness now. Yeah.
your biohacking and some of the next ones and definitely we're yes. ending karma through homeopathy and astrology we're giving away all the secrets who knows how long yeah, we will live not, either they're not really <laughs> secrets it's just again, it's, it's, more reco it's more of a recovered practice to the philosophy yes you know and again um it's wonderful christos it's, it has it's to regulatory it's, the time. it's amazing it's a time of practical work and i think the philosophy will come and we will advance and also. We did give it to just a few people, maybe like five or six people, and we felt that they didn't really get it. So that's why we're putting it in Vimeos now. We feel like it's, it's well, for a larger audience, and I, I want to find the people it touches. I think also with Pluto coming soon into Aquarius, it will just jumpstart a huge um, search of, gener of a generation that just wants truth, truth and to go directly into it. You know, they don't care about the old gurus, the old teachers. No. They just want to know the practical way and the, uh, you know, of course, with the philosophic aspect. People who are authentic, who have lived it all their And I think, I think um, that's where it's going. Yes, also, all odds. also, who is coming, of course, these days are quite interesting people who have nothing ever to do with it, have an opening, and then somehow they end up with us. Now, I'm not saying we are the only ones, but you're ending up with, with us, with people we have dedicated our lives to this. I mean, you've done it now for 40 years. years. I've been born into this. I'm 55 now. And to this day, my family doesn't understand it. None of, many people you never know, understand I mean, it. welcome to my boat. <laughs> but the idea is, I never thought I'm going to do anything else. Mm. You know, it's only dedicated. now, only now I have a desire to kind of break out of the mold a little bit because, you know, I've done it for, professionally for over 35, 36 years now. Yeah. And, um, Technology is a great, great tool because it makes things so much more accessible and then it leaves it with the student and their own personal capacity. You know, in other words, <laughs> you're getting, at least with, I can only speak about our work, you're getting a process. Where you are in that process is where you are. There's nothing right or wrong with it. If you want to achieve something, you have to put the work in. It's like with everything. And, um, the good thing is, it's like a book. You can put it in a cupboard, never open it again, or a file on a computer. And when you're ready, it's going to open and you say, now I can put the time in. One thing you never talk about is the time that you were doing magic in Enochian with a group of people in their basement, right? right? In a right, garage or right. a basement. In a garage, yeah. Um, can you say anything about Enochian uh, angels and what you learned? Because it, it was is, many, many years. Okay. So, Enochian is... The last frontier, I want to call it, in magic especially, because it is a dangerous system, and dangerous not because it's uh, life-harming, but it is a system that can catapult you into an experience where you're absorbing a lot of data, and sometimes this data um, can be quite traumatizing if you're not prepared to it. You're dealing with a system which is a real, it has a real language at its base. It has a grammar, a syntax, it can be translated, a Nokian. Um, I can speak it, uh, I can, uh, you know, it has a specific vibration. It opens a specific gateway to a different dimension. And you said a Nokian is very similar to Atlantean language. It, it is, it is. Uh, because when I did um, past life regressions very, very early in, in my life with people and other people, who had nothing to do with Enochian, had nothing to do with it. They could um, speak, it. speak it, you know, and then I would, no, use a, right. I, would, I would use a cassette recorder, basically, and record it, and then ask some people, said, oh God, where did you get that from? <laughs> so based on how I pronounce Enochian, is based on these old, old recordings and old uh, memories, where I realized that there is a syntax and a way of speaking it, and a, um, you know, prepositions and so on, it is a language that it is a language it is a language um and you were the seer so you were in direct i was contact. the seer of that group yes the Enochian, are group. they really angels how would you describe them now? you see they're not angels they're intelligences again it comes from a system john d edward kelly about the right. what is it 1500s well yeah, like this probably right? used it Everybody well, a lot of people it. used it but but um i don't see them as angels I see them as streams of intelligence um, 
they're more of a weave than anything else. They're weavers, you could say. For me, of course, the, uh, for example, the three fates, we always yes, talk about I them, right? <laughs> three ladies, yeah. The three ladies who are weaving destinies. Mm -hmm. To me, they're actually Enochian mm -hmm. beings, you know, who weave. So for me, Enochian beings are weavers. They're creating nets. Um, also, the idea of a um, dream catcher mm -hmm. is an Enochian process for me because it weaves a net to filter things out. Um, what is the I, benefit? We, we used to have a lot of... Um, a lot of amazing examples of uh, reactions mm. after these uh, rituals. What they also did is they isolated us. You know, once you're tapping into that kind of world, everything else looks like crap, basically. You know, it's, I don't want to say you don't want to leave, but you're on such a high frequency that you're, you're ending a ritual, you're coming out and you're disgusted by everything you see. <laughs> so it's not a very helpful, you know, in that sense, um, experience at first but once you go into interconnection and being part of that network for wanting of a better word um the informations the the powers the forces that can come through are quite powerful are quite interdimensional we would call it today uh it's a source of information for me first of all um but it is You're quite an authority on it is a very complicated path and it's been also more complicated by people who added their own spin on it you know americans always love to make everything so easy you know lose 20 pounds in 10 days <laughs> unless you die there's no way okay um, you can but it's extreme well good luck there are ways to do it uh, but the idea is don't do it at home uh, but the idea is that it's been watered down quite a bit and in its core, in its core, it's really just um, segmented rituals that are stacked on top of each other. Because you said many of them are mistranslated. They're mistranslated. So you want to correct but there are people who are very good in, they also have the time and the money, to sit there and um, really look at it from a linguistic point. Nevertheless, it is the sound that you're creating rather than what you're speaking that is important here. Um, and it's on various TV shows where they're speaking in Isn't it funny? Absolutely. It shows up, it creeps up in, in some, okay, questionable shows, but... But you, you know, talked about Charmed, that that had an advisor that was part of a... All these shows have, have, all these shows, Charmed, Sabrina, and so on, they all had um, advisors, of course, you know, consultants. We're doing magic. And that's why I, I love the Sabrina, because, oh my God, they, I mean, they went really... You know, some practices were real. Or even know? supernatural. They're, they're doing even, it in Enochian. Yeah, absolutely. They brought Which it had out. Which so have had an effect. You, ha you, they, you know, it is that story. I remember reading about the making of The Exorcist. Mm. And it, The actor said, you know, years later, how much stuff happened during and after the recording. Bad stuff. What do you think you're doing? You're invoking <laughs> some <laughs> force which is so unfamiliar no. with our way of life you know and i think it's an amazing movie because the sequel is coming out in october uh which <laughs> i'm going to say of course but i think when you look at it and you see it especially the first time it's a very suggestive yes it is it's a very suggestive concept the problem that we both have with these shows is just lately we saw a um a show where Lilith is a demon oh, yeah, who sucks the life out of people and needs to get pregnant. And Hecate too. Hecate. Hecate. Um, you know, that is a kind of... Ridiculousness. We ridiculous. saw that on Charmed, which was completely false. Well, it's a movie, you know, I'm it's not taking movie. it serious. But what kind of consultants are these? Well, but the idea is, of course, also some writers just scramble through the internet or some books and <laughs> just take whatever <laughs> they get. But the idea is that by bringing certain entities and certain ideas into the mass consciousness, mass consciousness opens more consciousness, which we send like a beam up and a beam comes down. And so, you know, I, I thought many times for many years to, to um, do something with Enochian. The problem is it always left my mind. I always forgot about it. That's and so this is... For me, a sign that says, not yet, you're not on the right path, you're not on the right track, or you're missing something. That's why, unfortunately, we're leaving now, but 
I was just invited to San Francisco to a private archive where they have um, Crowley's original Enochian texts. Um, we can go there any day. We and I would have to go there December, at some point. December. But, um, whoops. Happens. You see what happens. We talk happens. about these things. Where you go. We talk about these things. So, if you look at our video, we just fell. And, um, yeah, I just forgot about it. And then, you know. Well, the Nokian turns everything upside down. It It is like a, you know, it Mirror. is, yeah. you know what it reminds me of? As stupid as it was, the ending of Interstellar, but he goes into the black hole and then he ends up in some kind of library. That's what it kind of reminds it for me. You know, it looks really weird. It has this kind of feel of a... Hall of Record. Or... A Hall of Record is a really good way to say it. Or, you know, even what Akasha has described to be, which is not, you know, that library with... I'll summarize. To summarize. Okay. Maybe. And so, Enochian is a very unique system. And, again, I, would, I wish I could say I want to make it more uncomplicated, but I don't know yet how the Enochian realms want to make it accessible. Yes. So I'm waiting for that. But, you know, I put it out there and um, funny enough, now I'm getting the response, so I'm open for it. It would be quite a revelation. You know, there's, interesting enough, a lot of people are interested in it. People would be surprised who is really into it, right? I mean, you would be surprised who's really open for that stuff. But um, And the red goddess, Babylon, how does that relate to Enochian? when you get into her. Well, again, I worked with Babylon in a couple of rituals, and again, there's no, it has nothing to do with the references we see today. The, again, when a goddess, when a female is described in a demonic form, or evil, or blood-sucking, or sex-hungry, it's based on an older form of misogyny. That's very simple what it is, okay? As if a goddess has nothing else to do than <laughs> run around, you know, uh, Bob, Joe, and, and eating uh, children. And it's Dick. ridiculous. I mean, come on. It's ridiculous. Um, of course, it's ridiculous. So, again, that all comes from a time where people were more than happy to. Um, but how do you see her, Babylon? I see her as a very powerful being. She calls herself to me the architect. Yes. She calls herself the architect. And she, and she says, I represent the seat of all femininity, which is untouchable by anything else. But um, she's not calling herself feminine. She says, I am just a seed who orchestrates the architecture of creation so that what experience wants to manifest can actually take place. She is the construct of the experience. Because she yeah. calls us often in ritual. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Crowley, of course, his main work was to do the Babylon ritual. Right. Which you've done and many others. Yes, but again, you know, if you are driven by sex, drugs, and rock and roll, then that's what you're going to get. See, I'm not dr driven by that, thankfully. So what I get is a very, pra almost, I want to say, a pragmatic vision of it. Also Lucifer, for example, Archangel Michael, you know, um, saints, they come to me in a very pragmatic way. Yes. Very logic, very clear. What do you need? Where are you going? Don't touch it. Don't eat it. Wash your hands. You know, that kind of stuff. Very pragmatic, because... I am a pragmatic person, so when you come from a place where you believe in demons and hell and heaven and all that stuff, that's what you're going to see. You have to see what you believe. That is the filter, but it doesn't mean it's the reality. It's a reality of many forms of dimensional realities. Well, you're talking about the people who go through the cliff off to understand right. and to go eventually to the void right? and to meet by And the cliff off is, of course, again, it's called the... Um, the dark side of, of the, tree. the tree of life. There's no dark side of the tree of life. It's just upside. It does make does yeah. make sense. It doesn't make sense. If you put things upside down, then something's wrong with you. <laughs> it's like when you put a body on a cross. The cross is a wonderful protective symbol, but if you have a body nailed on it, I mean, you know, it's bizarre, you know, to, to worship um you know a dead person in that sense, you know. But some people do it, and that is the filter of their belief. So I always recommend to people when you do any kind of inner work, examine what filter is working for you. 
in what you believe Absolutely. you know and then ask yourself is that true if it's true then you have physical evidence if it's not true move on very simple now in all the videos that I did the one about the draconian path mm. the path of the dragon mm. that is the one that most people actually had a revelation bizarre I, I loved couldn't it. understand I couldn't understand it but it didn't surprise me it didn't surprise it's the most again it's a very complicated path because it intersects philosophy alchemy magic and shamanism as well uh, it's a real intersection crossroad uh, principle the it's people, a methodic path the people, the, yeah, the people made a run on it I don't understand it they made a run on it what, you, what would you like to say any last words I have written now a whole thing on the draconian path no what look is at the videos why the videos any Practice insights them. you had on the dracon it would go way too far now about what, what, about what Draco about I the dragons go, I would go way beyond this now and I don't want to start lecturing here because many I, of our students are now writing books on it okay. um, look at the Vimeos that's why we <laughs> made them but all the knowledge is in there it, because again it's not subject to a podcast and it would be just not even scratching the air of the surface mm. because it's such an intense path I'm doing a whole Vimeo again on all the dragons you know and I, think, work. I think it's important because the, and their path. for us for us the the dragon is the closest to the inner child mm. so it is the same in, intuitive voice if you want but of course the dragon has much more transformative the abilities eyes. yes you know that's the idea so it goes way beyond that I don't want to just throw something in the air and let you chew on it look at the Vimeos our links are all over social media you can also get them from Foster or me and they will guide you then if something calls you I'm telling you because we're going into Sumeria and the Sumerian myths and then the Sumerian magic and the shamanism of Sumeria well, which again involves dragons which again involves uh, Babylon yeah. it is now we're trying to get to the very essence of the original teaching yeah not just of Inanna those, that's part mm. of the teaching but even more yeah. it's gonna be exciting but first we have to travel mm. again but are we ready we're ready we're ready to travel we spent a wonderful summer here yeah. I have to say this summer I also reminisced a great deal about the past in which I looked back on you know what happened to my friendship with Don Eagle woman she mm. was my closest friend mm. for many years and the falling out of that and how it started to begin mostly when she started to criticize one day I was at a dinner and she was criticizing the participants mm. she had funny names for them like Robert De Niro for some woman mm. and I don't know why but that hit me because when you're a gay man mm. and people say faggot or they say things to you when I finally I really I really you know I couldn't have relationships because I was quite on a pedestal I was yeah. a teacher and I had thousands of students and it was very hard to be gay yeah. and I couldn't really express it so you know I did sleep with two of my students when I was in my 20s and it was you know it was lovely but in the end not good for me yeah. and um, the third one you know was such an awful person it was the end of everything for me and he told everybody what I did and so I had to really come clean and express to people you know I'm gay I'm both male and female in one body I feel both um, and you do too and that it makes a better shaman it makes a better teacher actually and most of the teachers I met in my life were in fact bisexual from Daskalos onward I mean I don't want to go into it but so many and I love them all and I actually like them more because they have a bisexual side. No. and you, you have it you have it and you went through it all your life yeah but if you have it you have it I mean if you're straight I'm sorry you have to live with it now <laughs> you can't be perfect <laughs> like us but um, you know but like again it how gives many you a different it gives you an, it, well but that teaches you that these people are not unspiritual they're just homophobes they're misogynistic they are racists it boils down to that there's really nothing else because if you because I remember you know people coming and uh, when I came in and they were nasty to me and I said to you what exactly are you teaching these people they are the most nastiest treatments I've ever experienced and I was ready to leave and said I don't need this crap I realized that there was all this projection on you you know um, 
Yes, of to be there. I love you, to be there. everything. And I thought, I'm out of here. You know, in that sense, I really changed the dynamic of it. Yes, because I great. demanded a very different kind of respect. You know, I mean, be in love, but I'm sorry, don't be an idiot. You know, don't be respectful, don't cross the boundaries. Which people um, are doing right and left. Well, that? but the idea is, um, you know, again, you're getting what you're sending out in the end, you see. I love Dawn Eagle and Moon very much. And when I heard her criticizing, you know, the people coming to the workshops, and then I saw other, other kinds of behavior that had to do with money, and slowly, slowly, I realized how our friendship ended. Yeah. And I was reviewing all that, like the day Sandra Ray went in front of all her people, I don't know how many, thousand, and she told them that uh, Foster is gay and therefore is not enlightened because he's gay. Yeah. And, you know, I had to forgive her for that. And she went through a whole process around that, and she's fine. And Don Eagle went through a whole process. But this lack of trust in me, just because I'm gay or whatever they projected onto mm -hmm. me, you know, how dare you make all these people go through <laughs> these exercises, you know, the, the criticism. They said, okay, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done with all this. That's but what I'm saying. Issues around is, money that people have. And the that's why I'm saying it is a solitary path in the end. Because, you know, in the end, you're almost forced to con be confronted with everybody's perception. Mm -hmm. And then you see, you really see people who they really are. It's not being unspiritual again, but it is that they're in their very core have a limited ability to really trust the process. They could they're trust in. It in the And so... You know, the whole long process. And that, the is, longer process. and that is fine. And that is fine. You or Jeannie Lyris, oh. who I love so much. Mm. And that day, when everything fell apart, you know, it took time. But yep. when it fell apart, I was looking at the deep friendships of my life, especially with women, mm. how they ended on these notes. And I have no connection to them anymore. Yeah. And how they broke my heart. And these were the three, yeah. especially Don Eagle Woman and, and yeah. Jeannie Lyris certainly broke my heart. I'd, it took me a while to recover. And when I met Christos, that all ended. You know, all that released. I, I needed a year, though, to release it. And then, fantastic. Sedona was great for that. Yeah. You can really be on retreat there and yeah. go quite deeply into your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. You know, but then it has to be done. And then you have to be done with it. I think this is all part of... I always say... With all I can do, I cannot help myself. Mm. And you just, as a practitioner, think you most of all have to trust the process because you are not supposed to help yourself with limits. There is a boundary where the deal is what you're getting is for others, not for yourself necessarily. That's only my particular case. You have a different approach to this. And some um, people are so outward with their lives. Everything is their achievements, and they were the editor of Time magazine, and blah, 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 blah. And I'm at this age now where, you know, I respect you, great, but I'm not interested in reading it. I'm very interested in your life story, because, and you're not so interested in it, mm -hmm. but it is fascinating. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that happen in this life yeah. for you yeah. that are fantastic. Yeah. I, I wrote a book about my life, at yeah. least two, and then I stopped when I met Jeannie, but I... I have more books, of course, of all those years meeting you and what happened. I'm writing all that down now. That's the reminiscing well, I'm Time for a third book, that's all I'm saying. You know, you have the time, you have the paper. I do. Um, do it justice. So you see what happens when we're going into it. All our personal stuff will come in and... Um, what we learned all these years. Absolutely. And the forgiveness. And still loving them after they broke yeah. our heart and our heart opened even more. Yeah. Well... Um, but I'm so grateful that I met you. Yeah. I'm so grateful for every person I ever met in my life, actually. Yeah. And I, and I mean it. I still and mean still. it. Because we have opened up to a, a, a new group of people who are really fantastic, especially our Singaporean friends. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my next girl is Singapore to, <laughs> to visit them. And if it's just for coffee with them, um, but to really take, fabulous ideas. Take all this knowledge and put it in Vimeo's. Take it and Absolutely. present it now. Not and just folks. In and it's plans. not easy. It's not easy because you need something that really has substance and really can transform and move somebody. Because I think when nothing, when something, you know, sounds great, but it doesn't have the ability to move you, then the purpose is um, is off. 
you know. And now you're in AI. Do you want to say anything about AI? I think technology in general, and I said it before, will explode. Get ready, guys. If you're not going with the plutonium movement, you know, buy a farm and grow some rabbits, you know. <laughs> It's going to become very, very technical. It's it's almost inevitable. Pluto enters the um, Aquarian house now, and that is always a, revel a revelation. And we see, it, of course, how quick AI takes over, technology takes over. Um, our society is kind of falling apart. The weather is changing, but you know, rapidly, yes. rapidly. But you know, un unless unless um, people are drowning, they're not going to believe it. So. So be it. You have to. You have to leave it. You know. People always say, "Why did you move to Las Vegas?" Well, there's no earthquakes. There's, there's no, nothing here. The flooding is very minimal. Very minimal. Um, everything that happens People are very here. Friendly here. Yeah. It's surprisingly a very nice. It's a world um, city. There's so many cultures. Absolutely. Here. Um, we again. I said it before. Should have done it much earlier. But um, it was good when it happened. You know, it was good. And so we are again ready to move. Ready to travel. Uh, only for eight weeks, right? This time, mm -hmm. so especially Brazil, was nine. especially Brazil or uh, Argentina. If you guys want to see us, that is the time to see us. Um, Please download these Vimeos. You know, there, they are. Look wonderful. into it. Learn English if you eight want. Eight more Vimeos are coming mm -hmm. before February this year. So right. people are downloading the whole thing. People are buying right. all you know, nine videos. And videos only and again, um, if they want. There was a misconception about the Q and A's. Only the people who become the inner core, which means they pre-buy the whole set, they are in one list, and then the list closes. Once the videos start, um, that list closes, and it's only the Q&A for these people. Okay? Starting in um, December. Yeah. And starting in December. We have one Q&A for everybody this week, this Friday. Right. And people can come to that, because a lot of people have questions. Right. And I want to start off that way, okay. before the tour. And then... A lot of people have bought the whole series, so they're going to be in the Q&As. Yeah. And then we go deeper and deeper, and of course it's very personal, yeah. the Q&As. They're like readings for everybody, too. Yeah. Let's see where you are in your process. Yes. In the great Therefore, movie. we made it in other podcasts ready. So I hope we see you guys, and uh, we're going to hear from each other from uh, on the road, probably from some bedroom again or some kitchen, or God knows where we're going to end up. But uh, we're going to keep you guys um, um, posted on everything. Look at our social media. You're going to see a QR code at the end of this Vimeo. And in the um, um, social media, you're going to see the QR can code Can I ask well. you one thing? And you can, always, you can always you know, click on it with your phone, and you get directly to the page with all the information. How did you feel with all these retrograde planets this summer? Don't ask me. Because for yet. me, there are moments, gaps. Don't ask me. Where you could be quite here and well, infinity at the same time. Retrogrades are not fun, but they're very necessary. Very also, important. they are, of course, um, illusions because yes. the planet doesn't go retro, doesn't you know, go spin backwards. backwards. Yes. It's just an illusion. So it's really about an introspection into what do you believe and how do you approach things. You know, and what are your illusions and, and what is reality? reality? So with that, what's your reality? Uh, make the best out of it. Uh, we see you guys. We hear from you, and we can't wait to be on the road again and see everybody. So from now on, you know, take care, be good. See you soon. And we'll be seeing you. I'll see a lot of people Friday. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.